All settled in? Good. These constant intrusions are most irksome. Yes? Have you seen? The well is filled up again. It's very curious, but quite wonderful. I'm happy that you're visiting Linda, but I know how much you teenagers like your televisions and loud stereos, so I must insist that you act respectfully and civilly while you stay with us. Since my nephew Hugh is away on business, I am in charge of this household. And if there's one thing I cannot stand, it's noise. Oh, Linda simply needs some time to adjust to her new living situation. England is not the United States. We do things differently, or should I say properly, here. The doctor believes it's just a case of nerves. What every British schoolgirl needs to know. All of her schooling in the States has left her with, shall we say, a cultural deficit. She's in capable hands now. I don't know, and the doctors don't know. No one seems to know anything. All I've been told is that Linda is unwell and that in her stead, I must look after matters. Yes, she is. Just as all Penvillans before her, Ethel Bossany comes from a long line of tutors that have taught many generations of Penvillans. Now, please, I really do not have time to entertain you. You may have the run of the house, but do not break anything and refrain from mucking about with items that aren't yours. Two rules Jane seems incapable of following. And before I forget, our kitchen is being remodeled, so our dining situation is rather unorthodox. I've made arrangements with a local restaurant to deliver meals to us. There should be a programmed number for them on the phone in your room. Feel free to order whatever you'd like. Hugh's daughter Jane is staying with us and would very much like to meet you. But please try not to distract her. She has her studies and mustn't be disturbed during her lessons. We do not have any permanent house staff, if that's what you mean. The Penvalents have always been self-reliant. We get on quite well without being continuously mollycoddled by a squadron of insipid, gossiping ne'er-do-wells. Now, we do have two other house guests. A Mr. Nigel Mukherjee, who is researching the Penvalent family history in the library. And Ethel Bossany, Jane's tutor. Oh, I am at a loss as to what to do about her. A complete loss. Sometimes extraordinary situations require extraordinary measures. I thought that perhaps a charm would help. Whatever it is that's plaguing that poor thing. Oh, for heaven's sake, child. Where did you ever get such nonsense? Puppycock! A ritual in the middle of the night? Young lady, I will not abide such wild stories. Imagine Ethel Bossany recruiting my grandniece into some kind of secret society. <laughs> Next thing you'll be saying Linda has been cursed by some roving spirit. Or that we have ghosts prowling about. It's not broken. I removed its crank, as it was proving to be too much of a distraction for Jane. I suppose I could see where it's gone to. But in the meantime, be a dear and do something for me, would you? Do you see that hodgepodge of plants over there? Yes, his language is quite colourful, isn't it? He's Cockney, you see. My brother Alan and I loved to make up Cockney rhymes when we were young. We drive our governess quite batty. Haven't got a pot of glue. Haven't got a pot of glue. Ah, how we teased her. My brother Alan found it somewhere in the house. He was quite fascinated by it, but he'd never let me look at it. It was purely your imagination, unless you saw a, a stray dog. But I will not countenance any histronics about this issue. We have enough to worry about with Linda. And please do not get any ideas about going outside to investigate. I do not want you tracking mud all over this house. Go see Nigel in the library. He's going to write a book about our family history. Oh, he was quite remarkable. He taught linguistics and computer science and won many prestigious awards. He loved games, especially pranks, and was forever tinkering with this and that. I do miss him sometimes. I'm not quite sure. We never really used it, but it was always full of water. That is, until my brother died. And then it just dried up. Most of these plants were brought over by my grandfather. He was quite the adventurer. I remember when he brought back Lulu from the Amazon. At first, Mother wouldn't allow us to play with it because it had picked up too many unsuitable words from sailors. But it gradually learned proper manners. Lulu is a very old parrot. She must be over 80 years old. Please be very careful with her, especially if you feed her. Parrots have quite delicate constitutions, you know. Magic word? Oh, yes. You see, my brother and grandfather would play a word game with Lulu. 
I never understood how it was played, but they'd play for hours. Lulu would sometimes grow sullen and refuse to play the game anymore unless they told her that... Oh, what was it that they'd have to tell her? It's perched on the tip of my tongue. Ah. Oh. They had to tell Lulu that she was a very, very clever and beautiful bird. No, of course not. I've lived here for many, many years, and I can tell you without a doubt that absolutely no ghosts walk these halls. An occasional odd creak here and there, yes, but no ghosts. But I do sometimes wonder if those who have passed away remain with us, lingering on. I miss my brother terribly. And I sometimes wonder if he is, in some way, still here. A what? A flashlight? I'm sorry, but we do not possess every new gadget simply because our American cousins do. Well, that is quite an inappropriate question. But since you asked, Hugh and Renee did not heed my advice and ended up marrying ever so young. Far too young. People grow in strange ways as they get older, and all too often they grow in different directions. What? I fail to see why that is any of your concern. But if you must know, I was only trying to help Linda. No, that was my brother's toy. A clue, dear. Haven't got a clue. Rhymes with glue, you see. But now he's gone. He died a month after my husband passed away. And ever since I've been here all alone... Until Hugh came back from the United States, that is. Jane was inconsolable after the divorce, but she's responded quite well, especially after Hugh remarried. No, I'm afraid not. Jane ruined all of ours with some sort of experiment she cooked up. But I believe she may have some of those glow sticks for illumination. Why don't you give it a try while I see about that crank? If we both succeed, we shall both be happy. If you catch my meaning. Were you able to get all those plants back in the box? Wonderful. And I managed to find that crank. There you go. Good day. Good evening. Run along. The pleasure is all mine, child. Oh my, you're looking a bit peaked today. A spot of fish fertilizer. That's what you need. Once I pot you up again... You'll be right as rain. And how is my favorite Aurelia doing in its new pot? Hmm? Why, look! Another shoot! What a good philodendron you are! I'm just going to pinch a little off here and a little off there. Now, that didn't hurt, did it? Well, aren't you the pretty spider plant? Oh dear, getting a tad dry, aren't we? Are those dreadful spider mites gone? Or is it time for another bath? And how is my little purple tiger today? Remember, they must all fit in that box. Remember, they must all fit in that box. Pot of glue. Ha, those were the days. They're my prize seedlings. I had them perfectly arranged in that box so I could easily move them about to catch the light. Unfortunately, Jane took all of them out when I wasn't looking. And now, for the life of me, I cannot get them back in the box so that they all fit. Do you have allergies, Mrs. Drake? Oh, yes. Hay fever. Although I'm not at all sure what's worse. My allergies or that medication. It makes me feel as if I'm about to float right out of my shoes. Who's hungry? Who's ready for some nummies? Did you say something, Mrs. Drake? Not to you, dear. But how can you expect to feel better if you don't eat properly? A healthy digestive system cannot do without roughage, you know. Ah, 